My name is Ray Wong. I'm a research associate in the Bruno Lab. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Paul Delgado Ogwin. Dr. Ogwin was a postdoc in the Bruno Lab from 2005 to 2012. And he's now a scientist at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, Canada, and assistant professor in the Department of Molecular Genetics at the University of Toronto. His current research focuses on the epigenetic basis of cardiovascular development and heart diseases. Today, Dr. Ogwin will be giving a talk on epigenetic control metabolism in heart failure. Please welcome Dr. Dr. Ogwin. Thank you very much, Ray, for that kind introduction. Uh, I cannot tell you guys, guys how excited and happy I'm here, but most of all grateful because you know being here entails a lot. And a little bit of that, it's very beautifully captured in, in this picture, in this signed picture that I got when I left the lab. When I left the lab, I not only had the basic tools or advanced tools that I needed to begin my own scientific uh, adventure, but I also uh, brought with me lots of memories and, and lots of history that I you know, stole from this group of amazing people whom I remember very fondly every day that I step into my office and, and I see this, this beautiful reminder of, of where I come from. So many, many thanks. And uh, of course, okay. Today, I want to give you guys a brief uh, overview of what my lab has been uh, working on and later on focus a little bit more specifically on our later research on the epigenetic control of metabolism in heart failure. Uh, this probably, I'm sure this doesn't need much introduction, so I will be brief. You know that chromatin, uh, uh, specifically epigenetic modifiers, uh, modify chromatin, uh, modify histones to favor the establishment of specific chromatin configurations that are associated with specific transcriptional outputs. For example, trimethylation of lysine 9 of H3, trimethylation of lysine 27, and ubiquitination of lysine 119 by gene INA, EZH2 in the polycomb repressive complex 1 and the polycomb repressive complex, sorry, polycomb repressive complex 2 and 1 respectively are associated with a compact uh, chromatin that is repressive for transcription, uh, whereas trimethylation of lysine uh, 4 and lysine uh, 36 are associated with permissive chromatin. And these histone marks can be removed and redeposited to favor uh, uh, transitions of, of chromatin structure. And there are other important factors like the CCTC uh, F bind binding factor or CTCF, which uh, mediates long range interactions in the genome to define chromatin domains. And our lab is in, uh, trying to understand how these chromatin structure transitions regulate the establishment and differentiation of cardiac progenitor cells and how altering these chromatin configurations can lead to adult onset disease. And so far we have been able to show that many of these uh, histone modifiers have important functions in development. For example, when we inactivate uh, EZH2, which is a histone methyltransferase in PCR2 in endothelial cells and their derivatives by using a type 2 Cree driver, uh, the mice uh, die during development around embryonic day 14 and they die with a hypoplastic myocardium and they have superficial and internal hemorrhages. Uh, by, by using uh, global gene expression uh, and, and chromatin uh, immunoprecipitation experiments, we found that EZH2 targets uh, key transcriptional activators of the matrix metalloprotease 9 and accordingly, we found that in, in the extracellular matrix in, uh, in, in, in the blood vessels, there is an increased activity of proteases indicating that EZH2 is responsible of regulating extracellular matrix remodeling to maintain vascular homeostasis. Uh, in, in different studies, we found that if we delete this chromatin organizer CTCF in 
cardiac progenitors labeled by NKX25, the mice, uh, the embryos also die uh, with a hypoplastic uh, right and left ventricle. And if we inactivate it in endothelial progenitors and their derivatives, the mice have very obvious defects in, in the extra embryonic vasculature. For example, in the yolk sac, you can see that the mutants have a disrupted uh, vasculature pattern as compared to controls. Uh, global gene expression show that CTCF in endothelial cells regulates a transcriptional pathway that controls um, reactive oxygen species. And, and accordingly, we found that endothelial cells here labeled by a uh, CRE-dependent GFP actually have increased levels of this marker of peroxide, uh, of, of lipid peroxidation for h &E suggesting that uh, CTCF regulates uh, oxy oxygen species accumulation in endothelial cells to control uh, vascular development. In a different study where we inactivated G9A also in endothelial cells, we found that the mice uh, have uh, defects in, in interventricular septation, and they also have defects in the, in the extra embryonic vasculature. For example, here in the placenta, we are looking at uh, a, a view of the fetal side of the placenta. You can see the normal placenta, how it's very well uh, irrigated. The mutant is, is abnormal. The, the, the area that it's irrigated is smaller. And we discovered that G9A controls the activity of the notch pathway, is particularly of uh, effectors of the notch pathway like RBPJ. And actually, we found that if we reduce the dosage of, uh, of the activity of the notch signaling pathway, we actually can rescue this vascular phenotype in the placenta, revealing a specific function of, for G9A in, in repressing notch signaling to regulate extra embryonic vascular development. So these studies really show that these different histone modifiers have uh, specific functions in particular aspects of cardiovascular development. We are now currently studying the function of the K36 demethylase, uh, lysine demethylase 8 or KDM8 in, in, in the heart. Um, K36 uh, methylation, it, it's a mark that it's deposited by this enzyme uh, known as NSD1. NSD1 interacts with the carboxy terminal domain of RNA, RNA polymerase 2, and it deposits uh, K36 dientrimethylation in the uh, nucleosomes that are displaced as the RNA polymerase complex transcribes. So when, when K36 trimethylation and dimethylation is deposited, it recruits the uh, histone deacetylases, which, uh, uh, which promote st uh, st uh, a stabilized chromatin, which uh, prevents spurious transcription to, to happen in intergenic regions. So KDM8 has to remove this mark so that the transcription machinery can transcribe again through the same gene. So even though K36 tri and dimethylation are deposited, during transcription, they are actually marking stable chromatin. Uh, KDM8, it's an interesting gene. It is uh, enriched in, in the embryonic heart, as shown by this uh, laxy staining in, in, a, in a reporter uh, line. And its constitutive deletion leads to embryonic lethality around E10.5. As you can see, as compared to a control wild type leader mate, the mutant embryos are smaller and they have a pericardial edema suggesting uh, defects in, cardi in, in, the, in the cardiovascular system. However, the function of KDM8 in the heart uh, is not clear. And this is where our newly minted PhD Abdallah Ahmed comes into place. Uh, as you can see from this picture, the, the first time that I saw this picture, I, I was convinced that Abdallah really has the power. Uh, then I saw this one and I, I wasn't so sure anymore. Uh, you know, so the jury is still out, but, but I, I'm sure that his work will convince you that he has at least some, some kind of powers. So what Abdallah did is that he inactivated KDM8 in, in developing cardiomyocytes by using MYH6 Cree as a driver of, for homologous recombination. And he uh, analyzed the levels of 
KDMA mRNA in controls, heterozygotes and mutants. And as expected, the heterozygotes have a decrease of around half to around half the dosage of KDM8, and the mutants have a more evident uh, inactive, um, decrease in, in the levels of mRNA. And the, the protein levels in whole hearts are actually decreased. And surprisingly, what Abdallah found is that these mice basically by 10 weeks, all the mice that he has analyzed die suddenly. And some of the heterozygotes also uh, die, suggesting some, some level of, uh, um, um, I forgot the term I'm looking for, but the, the decreased, uh, the, the, the sensitive to, to dosage, aplo insufficiency. There is aplo insufficiency in, in some mice. I'm not showing you the data here, but actually the levels of K36 dimethylation also are, 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 all, are increased globally. And what Abdallah found is when he analyzed hearts at, e, at eight weeks of age, the hearts look pretty comparable to controls, as you can see here in the whole hearts and also sections stained with uh, mass and trichrome staining. However, when he analyzed the mutants at 30 weeks, they were obviously enlarged. And the uh, histology analysis showed a very clear dilation of the left ventricle. And he quantified this, and, and as expected, the thickness of the left ventricle is decreased, and the diameter of the left ventricle is, is increased, as you can see here in the quantification, indicating that these mice are dying of heart failure caused by dilated cardiomyopathy. Dilated, dilated cardiomyopathy is the most common form of cardiomyopathy. It's indicative of heart failure, and it's the most common indicative for heart transplantation. However, we don't really know how it's caused. Uh, so we wanted to analyze this in more detail. Uh, he analyzed, Abdal analyzed the function of these mice by echocardiography. So you can see here the echocardiography. You can see the left ventricle here. You can see the ventricular wall here. And you can see how the heart contracts and how the 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 diameter of the left ventricle is decreased with every heartbeat. What he found as expected at two, point, at, at two months of age, uh, the heartbeat looks very similar with normal function in the mutants as compared to controls. This is how the heart looks, a uh, normal heart uh, beating looks at six months of age. However, in the mutant at six months, you can, I hope you can appreciate that these hearts are barely beating which again is supportive of, of dilated cardiomyopathy. We used a global uh, analysis of gene expression by our, uh, using RNA-seq in the left ventricle, uh, sorry, in the ventricles of mutants at two months of age, so before they have any obvious uh, functional defect. And we found that genes uh, represented, here I'm representing a uh, my, mitochondrial gene network and what the RNA seq showed is that genes in the mitochondrial gene network are predominantly downregulated, as, as 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 shown by by the blue color here. When we looked closer by a trans, a transmission electron microscopy into the cardiomyocytes of these mice, you can see the the, the results of of a control cardiomyocyte and a mutant cardiomyocyte. We found that the mitochondria in the mutants are more numerous as quantified here, and they are also smaller, as you can see here, as compared to control mitochondria. Uh, furthermore, when we analyze the uh, oxygen consumption rate of uh, isolated cardiomyocytes, we found that the mutants here in red have a decreased maximal respiratory capacity, indicating that mitochondrial dysfunction uh, um, precedes heart deterioration in KDM8 mutants. We wanted to understand the basis of uh, this uh, metabolic phenotype, uh, and we looked uh, at, the, at the electron transport chain in the mitochondria, which is a, a series of, of protein complexes that mediate a series of uh, oxidation and reduction reactions that need NAD and NADH as donors and, and acceptors of, of electrons. And this chain uh, culminates in the production of ATP, so the, the energy for the heart. 
I'm not showing you the results, but qPCR show that genes encoding all these components are significantly downregulated in the mutants. And Western blood relative to H3 also showed a decreased uh, abundance in complex one and complex four, which is quantified here. Interestingly, we also noticed that uh, the rate limiting enzyme for the production of NAD, which is called nicotinamide phosphoribosyl transferase, was actually decreased in KDM8 mutants. So this suggested that perhaps uh, a metabolic phenotype or a metabolic dysfunction is preceding the cardiac dysfunction. If we could somehow promote mitochondrial activity, we might benefit or prevent some of the, uh, some of the cardiac phenotypes. So the way that Abdal approached this is that he uh, provided NAD uh, in mice starting at two months and or every day until two months when he analyzed uh, cardiac function. And he analyzed cardiac function in controls in uh, mutants, KDM8 mutants, and KDM8 mutants treated with NAD. And as you can see here, the mutants from two to four months, they have a, a worsened um, cardiac function shown by a decrease in the ejection fraction and the fractional shortening and an increase in this measurement of uh, diastolic function. And what he, we, he found is that when treating the mice with NAD, basically this, this function is, is not progressive, indicating that treatment of NAD prevents deterioration and that increasing mitochondrial metabolism is sufficient to prevent the progression of dilated cardiomyopathy in these mice. So, so far we know that KDM8 acts as a demethylase of, of uh, lysine 36 in the heart and that it uh, promotes, um, um, that regulates the expression of a mitochondrial gene network, but we don't know how this is happening. So to look into this more closely, closely we analyzed the, the RNA-seq uh, in, in hearts at two months of age. Uh, I'm showing you here the up-regulated genes, the down-regulated genes. As expected, KDM8 was amongst the, 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 the most down-regulated genes. Uh, it called our attention that TBX15, which is a transcription factor, uh, TBOX15 was amongst the, the most strongly up-regulated genes. And interestingly, we, when we analyzed the genes that are up-regulated in the mutants, the regulatory regions are enriched for binding motifs for TVX15, suggesting that perhaps TVX15 is acting, or when, when, when derepressed abnormally in the heart, it's overactivating many multiple genes. And actually, we found that TVX15 protein is also upregulated. And we found that the levels of H3K36 are indeed upregulated in the promoter, the exon 1 and exon 4 of TVX15 in the mutants as compared to the controls, indicating that actually KDM8 targets TBX15 for repression. So this suggested that deregulating a KDM8 TBX15 axis uh, promotes metabolic dysfunction leading to heart failure. So how did we test this? So again, we, we know that KDM8 targets TBX15. We know that uh, there is dysregulation of, my, of this mitochondrial pathway in mutants. And we know that the rate limiting enzyme uh, of NAD production is, is downregulated. And when we analyze the promoter of NAMPT in mouse and human, we found conserved potential binding sites for TBX15. And luciferase analysis showed that actually uh, co in co-transfection experiments, TBX15 can repress uh, the activity or, or the, the, of, the, of the NAMPT promoter. So then this begs the question, does decreasing the, the levels of TBX15 then would prevent heart failure in KDM8 mutants if this is a key mediator of this phenotype? This is still a work in progress. We, we have to analyze more mice. And as you can see here, we have to analyze them at uh, uh, later time points. But so far, double mutants for KDM8 and TBX15 are alive versus in all, almost all the mutants at the same time point are already dead, suggesting that indeed TBX15 might be the key regulator uh, 
downstream of KDMA that, that's important in, in this uh, process of heart failure. So summarizing, we know that KDMA uh, methylates K36 in the heart that it represses TBX15. When we remove KDMA, TBX15 is abnormally derepressed. It then goes on and represses the expression of a key network of mitochondrial genes and leading to dysfunction and heart failure. And if we inactivate TBX15 by mutation or if we promote uh, mitochondrial function by providing NAD, we can prevent progression of cardiac deterioration towards heart failure. And there are lots of things that we are going that we are doing. So uh, right now, to conclude this project, we want to analyze, uh, identify, uh, analyze first more mutants. We want to cross-reference the transcriptome of mouse and human failing hearts. Uh, study the distribution of K36 uh, monodiene trimethylation in the heart, uh, uncover genome-wide targets of TBX15, and we are trying to leverage this knowledge towards identifying biomarkers of early stages of heart failure. And with that, uh, there are lots of people I need to thank. I'm so fortunate of working with such a group of talented people uh, as I mentioned before, Abdallah Ahmed, uh, Ahmed uh, led the, the research on KDM8. Uh, many others contributed to the, the, the studies on, on the function of the other epigenetic regulators. Many people were, have been helping me a lot, Han Kim, Jason Fish, um, Michael Wilson, Hun Kisung, Lorena Aguilar, um, Arnal, and many others. So thank you very much. And I circle back the Thank you now to you know, everyone who has helped me uh, achieve my scientific dream. With that, I thank you for your kind attention and I would be happy to take questions. All right, thank you, Dr. Delgado Algren. That was a uh, great talk. Uh, we thank have you. a few questions um, in the chat already. Uh, so I saw Dr. Licker asks, um, is TPX15 known to regulate mitochondrial TFs such as PGC1-alpha, TFAM, et cetera? And what is the TPX, TPX15 knockout phenotype? Right. Yeah, this is very interesting. So yes, TPX15 is a known metabolic regulator. It, it's, it, it is expressed very, very low, very, uh, at very uh, low levels in the heart. So it, its function as a metabolic regulator in cardiac muscle is not known, but it does promote uh, uh, the establishment of glycolytic fibers in skeletal muscle. Uh, it's, it, and it's already known to be a repressor of multiple uh, mitochondrial and, and metabolic regulators. So we are, figure, we are trying to figure out what's the, similari what, what's the similarity of its function in the heart. Um, we have a question for, from um, Sutanzu. He asks, does TBX5 also regulate KDM8 activity? Um, I, I don't know about that. We haven't looked into it. So I will have to uh, perhaps look at our rna data. And, and so we, we, are, um, we, are, we are going also to analyze the TBX15 mutants. So I guess that analysis will tell us if TBX15 could be also targeting KDM8. Oh, sorry, I think I forgot to answer the second, uh, the Heiko's second question. The TBX15 mutant uh, has some skeletal abnormalities, but other than that, they, they, they look a little bit smaller, but we haven't found any, any cardiac defect on, on them question uh, from uh, Jun Takeuchi. Uh, he wonders if human KDM8 and TBX15 patients cause cardio cardiomyopathy. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. So I didn't show you the data, but we have been very lucky. We, we got access to a very large cohort of uh, rna seq data from patients with, heart, with many different forms of heart failure and also uh, healthy controls. 
And actually, the levels of KDM8 are significantly down, and the levels of TBX15 are up. So we are we are analyzing that data in in more detail because it seems like the the transcriptome of the failing heart in humans is very diverse. So we are trying to identify or to figure out if we can narrow down or figure out uh, specific signatures that define certain groups of, of patients and, and then determine if you know the levels of TBX15 or KDM8 are different in, in those particular groups of, of patients. So we are trying basically to stratify the, the cohort. But yeah, so, so it seems like the mechanism could be relevant to human heart failure, but TBX15 or KDM8 are not known, uh, you know, drivers of heart failure in, in, in humans so far. Thank you. Um, we have two questions from uh, Mauro Costa. Uh, his first question is, um, have you looked at the heart function uh, of the flux mites when NAD was added? When NAD was added? Um, yeah, did you look at the heart function of the flux mice when uh, NAD was added? Oh, just uh, in at uh, the at baseline. Yeah, so we we are uh, we didn't find any any difference, uh, but we have we have we are analyzing more mice to to determine if just administering NAD has uh, an effect in in at baseline. So we we haven't looked into that carefully. And also, did you see any um, hypertrophic response at two months? Uh, it seems like there is no hypertrophy. We measured uh, cell surface area. Cardiac myocytes don't don't appear to be hypertrophic. So it seems like there is a but but we only looked at two months. So it is possible that uh, cardiac hypertrophy will develop a little bit later before the heart starts dilating. But, but we don't know yet. Um, we have a question from Jeffrey Alexander. Um, he's wondering if there's anything about gene structure of TBX15 that will make it very sensitive to H3K36 methylation. Um, is there any alternative internal promoters, for instance? Any alternative what, sorry? Uh, al alternative internal promoters. Oh, right. Yeah. So that's a very interesting question. So we, we don't know because, you know, K36, uh, as I mentioned before, it uh, prevents spurious transcription, right? So we don't even know right now, maybe it is possible that different isoforms of TBX15 are being produced that are perhaps more active or less active. We don't know. So that, that's something that we, we want to, to look up as well. That's that's very that's a very interesting possibility. Um, we also have question from Alfesh. Uh, he's very impressed uh, by how you consistently manage to revert the mutant phenotypes by co-deleting a single downstream target gene. Yeah. Uh, he wonders. Uh, he wonders um, what about the other downstream genes? Can they also act as suppressors? Yeah, that's a that's a possibility. You know, like. Uh, I'm, I'm just as astonished as you are. Uh, I think we have been very lucky, but also, uh, you know, I get this comment very, very often. And, you know, I, I, I agree with it every time. I think that we have just becoming better at analyzing genome-wide data, you know, like it's very difficult when we get those lists of, of genes that are dysregulated when we analyze any, any model. Uh, we have to look basically at every single one and read about the, their known functions. So selecting the, the gene that we are going to target uh, or, or analyze further, it, it's a difficult process. So I think we are becoming good at it. Uh, so it, it's astonishing, but, but I think it reflects the power of, of genome-wide analysis when, when you have the right tools to, to distill it. So uh, there is for sure potentially many other regulators that, that are involved, 
Something to consider is that we are looking only at, the, at very specific time points. We are analyzing only specific outputs. Uh, so in, in the readouts that we have, that, that we look at, there is an effect when we prevent uh, overactivation of TBX15, but this is definitely not, not the whole story. So there is always other targets to look at. In this case, it's particularly uh, difficult because so many metabolic regulators are, are abnormally expressed that it's really hard to determine what, what's, the, what's common to all of them. But at least the fact that you know, TBX15 regulates many of the genes that are, that are uh, dysregulated in these hearts suggest that if it's not the key regulator, at least at least it sits high in the hierarchy of events that, that are leading to heart failure. Thank you. Um, we have a uh, question from Patrick. Uh, he says, um, PBX15 um, loss of function in human is associated with um, Cousin syndrome, characterized by uh, hypoplasia of the pelvis, scapula, and cr uh, a craniofacial de defects are there any hints of these phenotypes in KO mice? Right. Yeah. So these phenotypes have been analyzed in mice. That that's what I when what I referred to when I said that these mice have some uh, defects in skeletal uh, development. So yeah, they, they have these 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 phenotypes. You know, like they, their their face and their head looks looks a little bit different. So they definitely have uh, some of these defects. Uh, important for us and, and lucky for us, at least what the, the analysis that we have done in the heart, the, it seems like the, the, the overall phenotype, it's not interfering with, with the outcomes that we are measuring. Mm 